Boring and beloved among politicos, journalists, and First Amendment idealists, C-SPAN since 1979 has broadcasted raw coverage of American democracy. It's known best for its monotone anchors and cool, calm, and collected shows. Think of the literal opposite of Fox News or MSNBC, and you'll get somewhere close to C-SPAN. Live coverage of the U.S. House here on C-SPAN. But in the first week of 2023, something changed. C-SPAN became, as The Hollywood Reporter mused, America's hottest TV drama. And they weren't wrong. Millions of Americans were glued to their TVs and computers watching C-SPAN as House Republicans took a historic five days and 15 ballots to elect Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. And to be clear, it wasn't just the political drama that made C-SPAN so attention-grabbing. It's how the election for Speaker was broadcasted. In a rare opportunity, C-SPAN was allowed to have their cameras and operators in the chamber, capturing moments like this. Kevin! Hearn! Or when caught in many lies, New York Representative George Santos almost missed his vote. Santos. Santos. During this first week of January, C-SPAN wasn't just a single frame shot of the podium or a wide shot of all the members looking like ants. No, C-SPAN showed Americans the side conversations and even the dust up between members of Congress. And we all loved it, which all leads to this question. Should the House rules change? Should C-SPAN be allowed to bring their cameras and operators into the House chambers indefinitely? Welcome to the DMV Download Podcast. I'm Luke Garrett, your host, and here with us to look at this very question, should C-SPAN cameras be allowed to film the People's House indefinitely and under their control, is Ben O'Connell, Director of Editorial Operations at C-SPAN, and Stephen Kehoe, Field Crew Chief at C-SPAN. Welcome both. Thanks for having us. So to start off, let's talk about the baseline rules of C-SPAN's house coverage. You know, we've all kind of heard about this independent C-SPAN camera operation, but what are the ground base rules? Ben, if you want to let us know. Sure. I mean, the base rules right now is that we're not allowed in the chamber. It's that simple. Right. When people tune in to C-SPAN and they're looking at a normal legislative day, they're actually watching a, a, a government-operated feed that is covering the House floor. Mm. Uh, this is not true for hearings. This is not true for briefings. This is not true for any number of other events that we cover. But for the House floor, Senate floor, it's government-operated feeds. And those feeds operate under very strict guidelines. They are only allowed to show the person speaking at the microphone. Mm and wide shots of the chamber. Right. Not allowed to show action, uh, reaction shots, not allowed to show people gathering in the back of the chamber, milling about the chamber, negotiating with one another, mm. or, or anything else. The good so, stuff. That's right. Um, and so has it always been like that? Yes, from the very beginning, okay. there, we were not allowed to have our own cameras in the chamber, except under very specific exceptions, mm. which I'm sure we'll get to at right. some point. And do we know, before we get to that point, do we know why it's been the rule that it's government wide shot angles? Yes and no. When it was first established under Tip O'Neill, mm. that's just the way it was. When the founder of C-SPAN, Brian Lamb, asked Tip O'Neill what, why they wouldn't let independent media cameras into the chamber during an interview. Up next former Speaker of the House, Thomas P. Tip O'Neill. And by the way, you know, one of the things that people have often missed is that they think we control those cameras and the House controls them. I never allowed you to control those cameras and don't ever change that. Why? Well, you know, some guy would be picking his nose or scratching his fanny and the television at a convention. That's what it goes on. It, it goes on the negative. It goes on always trying to downcast. Uh, I just don't think that uh, that is in the best interest of our Congress, of our our people, and I think that everything is going all right and leave it alone. He said he was concerned that we would be showing people picking their nose and, in his words, scratching their fannies, which... Fair, I guess. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So the base rules are it's government-controlled cameras, but obviously during the election of the Speaker in the first week of January, C-SPAN cameras were there, you know, notably. We all saw that. We all loved that. You know, so why was that the case? Why were C-SPAN cameras allowed in that time? So every two years, one Congress ends and a new one begins. 
the new Congress can't actually start until they elect a speaker and then pass rules governing the body itself. Mm. In that brief period, we ask permission each Congress. The speaker will allow us to cover up to the point where they start business. Got it. So it's a, it's a request we make to the speaker's office every two years. We've been fortunate enough that that's been granted on uh, various number of camera bases. That changes based on the whim of the speaker at the time. Mm. But we were allowed by the speaker's discretion up until the point where they start conducting official business. Got it. So take me back to January 3rd, 2023. You know, the Congress is kind of arriving to the U.S. Capitol. Do you all have physical cameras with camera men and women there, or is it kind of remote operations? What is it really looking like? What does that C-SPAN control feel like and look like? So it actually starts well before January 3rd. Okay. So uh, like I said, it takes a letter. It takes approval of the speaker in the last Congress to let us film the beginning of the next one. Mm. And then there were three manned cameras that we put in. We actually had four technicians in the chamber this past year, one acting as a spotter, because as a cameraman, you are sometimes get lost in the picture that your camera has, and you lose where people are in the chamber. Wow. Uh, so it took a little bit of preset the week prior. And so, Steve, you were in the room, you know, kind of watching this all unfold and capturing it. Mm-hmm. You know, what was that like having that independent control? How did you, you know, zoom into specific moments? You know, they've been kind of memefied <laughs> over the past few weeks, and they've given Americans this incredible access that I think we all haven't felt in a long time. You know, what was that like? Seeing all the memes and everything, that makes us feel like we did the right thing. <laughs> but uh, going back to that discussion beforehand, we, as a production team, we had a conversation of what did we think would be the story. Now, none of us knew that week was going to turn into what it did. Right. But we had some reservations about whether it would be a one ballot speaker election. Uh, We had talked about seeing the new Republican leadership take over. We had talked about seeing how Speaker Pelosi would now become a backbencher if there'd be some kind of passing of the torch with her. Of course, you know, we had talked about some of the incoming freshmen and wanting to catch a view of them. So our, the first go at it, we kind of had a different picture in mind. But right. as the week went on, the story started to change a little bit. Mm. Uh, so seeing the strange bedfellows, you know, where people are crossing the aisle and turning into some great bad lip reading uh, <laughs> yes. memes and things, it, that's kind of the, the flavor we're, we were kind of looking for. Yeah. But I would argue that that wasn't, that's not a very big departure from what we would do on a daily basis. Right. Uh, so it was just kind of, I think what made it extraordinary was the circumstances. Yeah. But I'd like to think while we were all certainly on our game, it wasn't that different than what you would normally get. Mm, mm. And so do we have the, the numbers of how many people kind of tuned in? I know it's probably hard to capture it all. It, maybe just a lot is the, <laughs> is the number we should go with. I mean, I've seen on these memes on TikTok at least, Millions and millions and millions and millions of views on Twitter. You know, uh, there are some pretty notable um, personalities on Twitter that just take from C-SPAN and, <laughs> and post them. And they've garnered like tens of millions of views. But it must have been just a lot of people tuning in. Yeah, we'll go with a lot. I mean, the, <laughs> as a nonprofit network, we don't take ratings. Interesting. So we have absolutely no idea how many people are watching our, our at least our linear television product at wow. any given time. Okay. So you, the only numbers, hard numbers we know are the numbers that one would see on our YouTube channel, mm. on uh, social media outlets, um, uh, and on our website, we, we re- the number of people who downloaded our app increased significantly. Right. Uh, but in terms of how many people were watching us on TV, it's, it's hard for us to know. Mm. Uh, we did see some reporting by the Wall Street Journal that looked at something called Samba TV, which is a ratings agency that, that uses... Uh, agency, a ratings company that uses smart TV technology right. to estimate viewers. They showed an increasing number every day. Right. So uh, that, a that's, lot. A, that's a lot <laughs> is what we'll go with. Plus, our cameras were in use on every other network. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. No, that's 100% true. Now, you know, at this moment, the speaker was elected. You know, Kevin McCarthy got the speakership after five days and 15 ballots. But now I feel like the public's appetite is kind of whetted for more of this type of independent coverage of the House. And C-SPAN has actually written a letter to the speaker asking for more opportunities like this. You know, why is C-SPAN asking for more, more access at this point? Well, there are two answers to this. Part of it is we do this every time there's a new speaker. We right. request to have our own cameras in the chamber. Mm. Uh, so this is not new for us to right. make such a request. Uh, but why we do it? We do it because of transparency, really. I mean, Americans want to watch their lawmakers at work. And if you're only watching them give a speech in the House chamber and you're not seeing who they're negotiating with in the back of the chamber, you're only giving part of the story. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I'm thinking of that comment that we kind of started off the show with where, you know, you don't want to catch uh, Congress members like picking their nose, you know, and stuff like that. But I think as we all saw getting these side conversations, these unlikely pairings, um, even dust ups uh, between, you know, Congress members like you see raw politicking happening and it makes you interested. It makes you want to get involved. Um, do you think there's a value to that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, how many people were asking Matt Gates or uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez what the two of them were speaking about when we were watching them talk on the House floor? Mm. Or, or uh, uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez speaking with Paul Gosar? Right. I mean, you later saw articles where the parties were talking about what they discussed on the floor. Mm. The, no one would have known they had spoken with one another right. had our cameras not been in there, mm. much less learned what they talked about. Mm. Well, one thing I want to—you brought up the, the, the tussle. Oh, and oh the, the yeah. Dust up. The dust up. The dust up. I was actually on camera. for That was my camera at the time. No way. During it. Yeah. And just to— Tell you what it was like. So please, the between this is between the 14th and 15th vote. Right. We had had a really long break before the 14th vote started. I think that happened at 10:30 at night. Yeah, at Friday. And all of us said they wouldn't come back tonight unless he's got it. So when it didn't happen, the mood certainly changed in the room, which was obvious on television mm. and among us, saying, "Okay, something's something's happening." We really got to figure out who's talking to who. And McCarthy had walked up to, to Gates. They were, they were talking. That was me on camera. The discussion we had had amongst the operators was, okay, I'm going to stick with McCarthy. So when he broke to go away, I heard everybody gasp, saying, oh, did you see that? <laughs> and I, I, while I saw a bunch of people coming down the aisle, I didn't know if I caught it. And so during the next... We, you know, we survive through the next vote. Right. McCarthy is elected. It takes this really long lull where they have to escort him out before they, he comes back in as the, uh, the speaker. I was gutted. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, <laughs> all anyone is going to talk about is the dust up. And it would have been on my camera and I missed it. So I didn't, I didn't know until I saw it replayed. Right. If it was going to be there or not. And I just, it was eating me alive. I can't imagine. The whole time that night. And, they, and I was sitting there thinking, everyone's going to say I did it on purpose. <laughs> and I'm, you know, because we didn't want it. And it, it was gut wrenching. I'm sure. For that, for that little bit before the speeches later that, wow. later that night. But it was, it was tough. And you caught it. You, the, like, I, you I caught the, like, the hand me. on Thank, the face. I, I, you know, that, that was. I, <laughs> <laughs> that was there. I am so thankful that it was there. Like I said, I was, I, I, I was dying in <laughs> for that brief moment where we were, could take a breath, just thinking, oh, oh my gosh, I had it, and I, McCarthy was the the moment. That's so I was true. Right to follow him. No, you were. But, but boy, I wish I had stayed. <laughs> it, it, it's, it really is though, amazing how quickly your brain moves on from a moment. So prior to the lunge. Prior to McCarthy even walking back, all eyes were on Matt Gates. Yeah. I, I was texting with Christina, our production manager, and Bridget Diggs, who was our director at the time. And I was like, you cannot overdose on Matt Gates right now. And it, we, so we were showing him as he's trying to decide. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't put myself in his brain. Showing him prior to him casting his vote ultimately present right when 
he could do a couple things that would have made uh, made McCarthy speaker at that moment, and mm. voting present wasn't one of them. And that was forgotten the moment that McCarthy got up, walked back to him, and then the lunge yeah, happened. Yeah, that goes into end. how over the week it changed, mm. right? Mm. So the first vote, okay, it didn't happen. You know, okay, this is the first time in 100 years. Yeah. So let, what are we going to do here? And then, you know, what... What was interesting, where where I was seated in the in the chamber, McCarthy's family was behind me. Wow! So at each vote, when it became clear that he was going to miss, I could hear the groans from his fan. You know, so it was I had the personal, and, and that would be one thing that I, if there was something we could have covered that we couldn't capture, mm. it would be that personal thing. But there was just kind of no practical way to do that. Right. So I could feel it going behind me. I'm watching it down below. And so it was just kind of what's happening, what's happening. And every day it changed. Every vote, the story seemed to change. So by the end, we had just decided amongst the production team, and this is a testament to Ben giving us the freedom to make these calls, right. was, okay, we're going to make a point of showing everyone who at some point during this week voted against McCarthy yeah. because it's them turning that makes him the speaker. 100%. And so that's how we decided to do those last couple votes. But um, but yeah, it was an ever evolving, ever evolving thing. How does it feel to be behind the camera of what the Hollywood Reporter dubbed America's hottest TV drama? <laughs> I mean, that's what I just I love is Friday night, yeah. Friday night, and the hottest thing on TV was C-SPAN. Yeah, well, representative government in action is one of the most compelling things you can imagine, mm. and you know, re- reference the. The point there that if there were more people in the chamber, if we, there were more meetings amongst themselves, it might happen a little bit more. But that's that's what was so amazing. You could see everyone there, and as the totals just changed a little bit here, we were getting a little bit closer, and then it, you see it come together, and mm. that is what is compelling. Mm. It was no no overt deals or anything like that. It was watching it grow in the moment is Mm. what made it really interesting. Do you all think that it's going to happen? Do you think, you know, the speaker will let C-SPAN bring cameras in and film the people's house independently? Well, as Ben said, this is a longstanding corporate mission. Mm. It's something that we think we do a good job at, that we can present things in a nonpartisan way taking people there. I think, like you said, the, we were talking about the increase in viewership that, that bodes to how we do uh, our job, that it is respected and it is has value. And uh, hopefully we're closer than we were three weeks ago. How far open that door is, is unfortunately not up for us to decide. Mm. And it's ultimately up to the speaker exclusively. Or would it be up to the House? You know, that's a great question. I mean, yeah. our our impression is that the Speaker could do this of their own volition. Mm. There are, however, some legislative <clears throat> efforts out there in order to compel the Speaker to open the chamber to independent media cameras. Um, I, I don't know that those would go anywhere without the Speaker's blessing. However. Right, right. I, you know, I think of C-SPAN as nonpartisan, as you mentioned, Steve, but you are asking for something political to happen, which is let C-SPAN cameras, you know, get into the chamber and, and act independently. Do you all see this as an inflection point or is this just another two year kind of request? Seems different to me. How? Uh, I mean, as Steve has mentioned, it seems like the door is open at least a crack. Mm. I mean, I, I don't want to. Guard, I, I remain guardedly optimistic, hmm. which three weeks ago I would have thought there was no chance. Right. Yeah. I, I would have never thought coming out of the first day that turned into the first week right. that we would even be entertaining that discussion. I've been in the chamber on the first day several times mm. and never once thought, oh, we'll be, we'll be back soon. Mm. <laughs> it's always been two years from now. Do you think democracy would benefit from, from allowing independent C-SPAN cameras? Democracy, that's kind of an abstract question. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, ultimately, is. ultimately, that is up to the members, right? What was so compelling about 
that first week of Congress was all those members in the chamber together. They were all in there together. They were all talking, both with their party and with the other side. And it's up to them. If we go and they don't go to the floor, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Mm. Uh, but it's the what was what made that so compelling was it was more of an Iowa caucus. It looked like right. than a typical speaker election where it's already pretty much predetermined. Mm. And any way you view that, it's compelling. You can see the conversations. You can see the 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 pain on some people's faces and the and the poker face on others. Right. And if they're not in the room, there's nothing to see. So right. would that would our coverage allow for more members on the floor together at the same time? Maybe. Right. Maybe that would keep them out. Mm. But that's up. That ultimately, that's up to the members. Mm. I, I'd only add that whether it's good for democracy, it certainly is good for the American voter. I mean, right now we have the government covering the government, and they only show you what the government wants you to see. Right. If you have disinterested journalists in the room showing you what's actually happening in the room, that's more information for people. Right. The bottom line is our cameras are in the hearing rooms every single day when Congress is in full swing. Mm. And I, I, I don't know how this is significantly different than that. Allowing our cameras into the chamber would be significantly different than that. They're already under the public eye yeah. in every single room <laughs> that's, true. that's publicly accessible with the exception of the House chamber, mm. which is ridiculous. Yeah. And I think moving ahead, you know, the speakership election was chaotic and crazy and, you know, just raw politics. But that doesn't seem to end there. You know, this 118th Congress is going to be an interesting one as far as there's a slim majority, you know, um, more coverage like this could happen. You know, the debt ceiling is <laughs> impending. Um, do you all hope that you know, you'll, you'll get your C-SPAN cameras back in there and kind of give this raw access and all this political drama kind of to the people again? So Ben can probably speak more to this. In our, I think, a slight departure in our letter to the Speaker's office about access uh, for our cameras on, on a permanent basis, we added the caveat of, we would like to maybe be considered for major pieces of legislation. Mm. So again, we talked about that door being slightly open. If we can get in even for things like that, you mentioned the debt ceiling and yeah. any other things that might be high priority on the agenda for the new Congress, if we can get in there, we can provide a different view than what is currently available mm. during those major debates, uh, policy discussions, however you want to yeah. refer to it. Just pegging off what Steve had said, we also tried to make this really simple for the speaker's office in the letter mm. in that we didn't request exactly the same access that we had during the speaker's election. Instead, we asked if we could put in a few cameras to supplement the house standard house feed. Mm. So we'd be able to use the house feed, but then have our own cameras to show those tight shots, to really follow the action that's not at the microphone on the House floor. And these would all be robotically controlled. So we're not asking for a bunch of people in the chamber. We're not asking for us to be the exclusive cameras in the chamber. Mm. We're simply asking to supplement what the government-operated feed does now. Mm. So Speaker McCarthy isn't sitting with us here today. <laughs> but if he if he was you know what would be your like two sentence pitch <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i think americans watched uh their government in action in a unique way two weeks ago and they have a real appetite for it so wouldn't you want them to have that on a daily basis or at least when the big bills are on the floor and it really matters, mm. shouldn't they be able to have that same view of the floor under those circumstances? That'd be my pitch. Yeah, I mean, it, that's what it comes down to. That what was so riveting was government in action. And that's all we're requesting, an opportunity to show government in action. Well, Ben, Stephen, thank you for your time. 
Thanks, Lou. Great. Thank really you very much. Appreciate it. And I should note, I reached out to Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, for comment on this issue. No response was given. But there is some bipartisan support or at least interest in allowing C-SPAN cameras into the House indefinitely and independently. Republican Chip Roy from Texas, you know, in talking with Jake Tapper, said... What the American people were able to see unfold on the floor was a good thing for our democracy and our republic, right? It was a good thing for people to be able to see the inner workings. And this isn't just a shirts and skins, red and blue, you know, two-team thing. And Democrat Congressman Mark Pocan from Wisconsin told CBS... Some of us uh, Midwesterners kind of shun uh, the cameras, but it's important for people to see what is happening. Pocan has actually drafted legislation requiring C-SPAN cameras be added to the House, but does it have enough support? Definitely not at this point. Will it in the future? You know, time will tell. That'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. This show is brought to you by WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at WTOP.com, and of course on the WTOP News app. You can find out more about this show at dmvdownload.com. And please let me know how you like the show, rate and review, give us some stars, and I'll see you next Wednesday.